Hey, what is up guys and welcome to RB and Hardware. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys a cheap gaming PC for beginners that you can build in 2021. Let's get it. In this video, I'm going to build this $1,000 gaming PC from start to finish featuring the brand new GeForce RTX 3060 from NVIDIA. I'm gonna run you guys through the entire building part before looking at some gaming performance so that you get an idea what kind of frame rate to expect in some of the newest PC games out there right now. So buckle up, let's get started. Let's go ahead and get the motherboard out of the box. This is one of the best budget motherboards with support all the way up to Ryzen 5000. The Gigabyte B450M delivers astonishing performance and features for its price tag. Before installing the CPU, let's go ahead and get rid of these two CPU cooler holders and then we can go ahead and unbox the CPU. And for today's build, we're gonna use the 6 core Ryzen 5 3600 with a fast clock speed of 3.6 GHz base clock and a 4.2 GHz boost clock. Now to get away as cheaply as possible, we're gonna make use of the included stock cooler, which as can be seen has no problem keeping our CPU cool even during the most intense moments in Crisis Remastered. And the Zen 2 based 6 core 3600 delivers great performance thanks to its high core count and thread count, making it an excellent budget pick regardless if your main focus is gaming, streaming or maybe even both. The 3600 is a brilliant CPU pick for gaming PC build in 2021. To install the CPU, we need to match up the triangle located at the left side corner with the triangle or circle on the motherboard, lift up the lever, line up the triangles and then gently place the CPU in its socket just like so, then lower the lever and the CPU is installed. Next up, let's go ahead and get the CPU cooler ready for installation and the installment process is very easy and straightforward. Make sure that the four spring screws align with the screw holes, then yeah, carefully tighten the cooler down in a pattern, something like so, until you feel resistance. And you wanna take the CPU fan cable, and this should be plugged into the CPU fan header on the motherboard, and we find this at the top corner. Next up then is the M.2, I'm going to link up the best current M.2 deal down below. I've been using this unit from Kingston for most of my PC builds and this is a high quality and budget friendly M.2 that speeds up the loading screens by a ton compared to a standard traditional hard drive or you know any SSD. The M.2 easily slides into its socket in a sort of a 40 to 45 degree angle and will be fastened into place using the M.2 screw. And that brings us over to a RAM pick for today's build and this is one of the most popular DDR4 kits from Corsair called Vengeance LPX. It's a 2x8GB kit with a price tag of $88 making it one of the cheapest choices out there currently. If you're looking for something with RGB support, I'll link up my top favorite budget choice down below as well. Now let's go ahead and prepare our case and this is one of the most popular mid tower cases among DIY builders. This is the H510 from NZXT. With power coated paint, two pre-installed fans and plenty of expandability, an option to get two LED strips and a smart hub that you can easily address and customize fan speeds and coloring through the NZXT's own software, the H510 from NZXT is a powerhouse. If you're worried about high CPU and GPU temperatures, I'm happy to report that you don't have to worry about that. 
but to get some extra cooling over our GPU, I actually ended up installing a single 120 fan at the front and there is room to install another one if you want to as well. We simply remove the glass panel of the case by unscrewing one single thumb screw on the back of the case. Before installing the motherboard, don't forget the motherboard IO shield. And we find this inside the motherboard box and this will be installed from the inside of the case with these audio ports pointing towards the bottom. And then we can go ahead and secure the motherboard using the screws that comes provided by NZXT. And now we're almost ready to install our power supply, but yeah guys, before we do that, let's first go ahead and install the case cables for the power button as well as the USB. Let's start by USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. The connector is located down at the bottom of the motherboard. Moving on to the front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Next up we have this USB cable for the smart hub. And lastly we have this front panel connector and you find this on the lower right side. Grab the power supply and make sure the fan is facing downwards. Put it in its slot and secure it. Now we're gonna do just a few more cables before it is time to install our graphics. First up we got the 24 pin power for the motherboard and this one goes to the right hand side corner of the motherboard. Next up we got the 8 pin power, this is for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Then yeah the case also need a SATA power connector to feed power to the smart hub and the RGP LED. We're also going to install the extra fan I talked about at the beginning. And this is so that we get a little bit extra cooling over our GPU. Now, NZXT has fitted the case with a tray that easily can be removed to make it easier to install let's say extra fans or radiators. Now make sure that the fan is pointing in the right direction with the arrow pointing towards the graphics card. And then make sure that you're hooking this up to the small tab. Alright guys, so it's time to go ahead and install the graphics card. This is the GeForce RTX 3060. This model that I'm demonstrating on is called Gaming X and it comes from MSI. But you can basically use whatever 3060 variant you want here. Now the 3060 comes with a whopping 12GB of fast G6 memory, which yeah is enough for heavy 4K gaming. And it should be said that gaming at 4K resolution is certainly possible. But in most titles out there it will require you dropping the settings quite significantly. Anyway, having a look at the 3060 performance stand against similarly priced competitors. We see that this $399 GPU holds up great in today's modern games making it the perfect pick for any budget PC and with features including DLS 2.0 and strong ray tracing performance, this thing is a beast, yeah to say the least. And if we take a deeper look at the 18 game benchmark, running most games at high to ultra graphics, the 3060 delivers fantastic results at 1080p, but let's say you have a 1440p monitors. Well, it turns out that the 3060 handles this resolution pretty damn amazing as well, as can be seen. Obviously everything is in bells and whistles, availability is still very limited, but the situation is looking better every day, so yeah, fingers crossed. Anyway, plug in the graphics card and take this dual PCIe cable and plug it into our graphics and... Yeah, slap on the side panel and that's it. 
Let's fire up the PC and let's take a greater look at some of the games tested at a deeper level. Now before we do that, here is what the final port list is looking like. Now assuming that GPU prices keep falling, you should be able to pick up all parts for around $1000. Guys this is definitely one of the best performance gaming PCs out there right now. Alright so let's kick it off and have a look at the latest installment in the Resident Evil saga called Village, starting with 1080p. Here I ended up putting the graphics preset to max and let the game figure out the settings. This resulted in an average of 76 FPS with ray tracing turned on. And great news, even 1440p runs without stutter with an average just over 60 FPS. Let's move on to Rust and let's start having a look at my settings. Starting with 1080p, here I'm putting the graphics preset to max and this gives us a frame rate of around 68 at both 1080p and at 1440p. Moving on to Days Gone and we're starting things with 1080p where I'm settling for the highest settings in the game. This gives us a frame rate of 103 FPS on average and about 75 FPS at 1% low. Bump into resolution to 1440p gives us 74 FPS on average and 1% low at 54. Next up is Red Dead Redemption 2 that recently received an update to support DLSS which uh, yeah, actually improves the frame rate by about 10 FPS without losing any significant picture quality. Anyway at 1080p with anyway at 1080p with very high settings you can expect about 80 FPS and at 1440p you will see around 66. Metro Exodus and Haunts Edition is up next and as you guys can see I'm going all in here. Graphics preset as well as ray tracing is set to ultra results in 65 fps at 1080p at 1440p you can expect as much as 65 fps at this resolution i am however lowering the ray tracing settings down to normal with that said let's move on to crisis remastered and here i'm putting everything at very high settings with ray tracing turned on 1080p results in 62 FPS and 1440p gives us around 50 FPS on average. Now if you enjoyed the video, now if you guys enjoyed the video you know what to do. The video took me ages to complete so please if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up and get subscribed to never miss any of my future PC builds. Thank you guys so much for watching.